The demon prince goes to the academy chapter from the moment one is born. Everything is determined. There are people with limitations on what they can achieve in life, while there are others who seemingly have no limits at all. If one isn't born into a high social class, they must at least be born with talent. In this way, one's innate qualities become their entire being. Roberto de Gardinia firmly believed this, as the first in line to inherit the throne of the kingdom of Gardinia and praised as the most talented in the royal family's history. It was only natural for Roberto to live with such a mindset, while not as powerful as Kernstadt, which was hailed as the most powerful kingdom. Gardinia was also one of the so formidable nations, therefore, Roberto, who was destined to be the next king, belonged to an extremely high social class. When he enrolled in the royal class at the temple, a prestigious institution where only the most talented individuals regardless of social status could attend, he was given the ranking among his peers. Roberto never doubted that he was one of the best talents in the world and a worthy successor to the throne. Would you like to taste defeat? That was his mindset, at least until he was suddenly provoked by a second-year senior. Roberto thought he had responded quite gentlemanly. After all, the royal class determined one's rank based on talent, not status, and he was at the very top. Even if they were both class, they couldn't possibly be equals. He believed he had been quite polite, addressing his senior with at least some level of respect, despite the senior being ranked only. However, the response he received was violence. Roberto never considered that he had been rude. As a boy who had spent his life in the palace, looking down on everyone except the king, Addressing someone with respect in itself was a big deal, especially when that person was a commoner. He had been struck by a mere the ranked commoner, solely because that person was his senior by a year. At the time, Roberto had refused his senior's challenge, but he now regretted it. He could have shown that arrogant commoner the swordsmanship of the Gardenia Kingdom, winning the first year tournament. Roberto couldn't understand the significance of such a trivial victory, especially since he hadn't seen it first and so, if that insolent commoner dared to provoke him again, he would gladly crush him, senior or not, he would show the true face of Gardenia's swordsmanship, restoring his damaged pride and honor. What are you glaring at? Ah, nothing. Watch your eyes, or they'll make noise, kid. Thump thump Roberto was left speechless as Reinhardt, whom he happened to encounter, gently tapped his cheek and walked away. As it turns out, people are unable to easily overcome deep-rooted fears, regardless of their mindset. Roberto squinted his eyes and glared at the retreating figure of Reinhardt, who had nonchalantly, even rudely, flicked his cheek as if to say he was nothing. He when Reinhardt suddenly turned around, Roberto quickly averted his eyes with lightning speed. If you're going to stare, then stare, Reinhardt laughed, as if he had eyes on the back of his head, and uttered those words. Just one look, you brat, this time, Roberto couldn't even properly look at Reinhardt's back as he turned away, to to Roberto de Gardenia. His second-year senior Reinhardt had been nothing but an impudent commoner who had rudely summoned him from day one, however, it seemed that his classmates thought differently. You remember that senior, right? Oh, you mean Reinhardt? The senior. Yeah, him. His impression was so striking that, although the seniors they had actually met were Ellen, Harriet, and Reinhardt, everyone's memory was filled with a strong impression of Reinhardt upon their first encounter, first year. Svella von Gleyen, a young noble from the Gleyen barony, she had studied with them for a very long time, from the Temple Elementary Division. She was also a classmate who recognized Reinhardt, Harriet, and Ellen. Her talents were in spear mastery and magic body strengthening sensitivity. She possessed extraordinary talents and qualities among the battle-oriented students. Stella was sitting in the first-year lobby, conversing with her classmates. Roberto pretended not to listen and secretly eavesdropped on the girl's conversation. He didn't think he was eavesdropping. He merely thought that their conversation naturally flowed into his ears. Honestly, isn't he handsome? At Silla's words, Roberto had to suppress the urge to jump up from his seat. How could that good-for-nothing, who looked like a parasite, be considered handsome? Roberto, who had unintentionally praised Reinhardt in his heart, held back his boiling anger. Really? 
I was too scared at the time. He did look scary. The ones who responded were Rosalie and Cardinal Ayn. Both had seen Reinhard trample Robert mercilessly on their first encounter and remembered him as very intimidating. No, I heard he's not usually that angry. It's just his expression, or something as Silla's first impression of him during the tournament took precedence. It was clear that she placed more importance on the fact that Reinhardt was her senior. Moreover, his major was close combat. He's incredibly skilled too. He was already able to perform magic body strengthening in his first year, which even third year students can't do. I saw it with my own eyes, really. Magic body strengthening. Upon hearing those words, Roberto felt as if his thoughts had come to a halt. It was a high-level combat skill that countless talented individuals, handpicked and trained for over a decade, barely, barely managed to grasp, and he had already been able to do it during his first year. Roberto wanted to scream for her to stop lying. I want to be friends with him upon hearing Stella's words that were mixed with the wind. Roberto felt his already tangled feelings becoming even more twisted. Seems like Lucinel has already become close. The unique silver-haired girl, who was the of the first year and had been half asleep in the second year dormitory, was practically living there. So, how on earth did he do it? I'll have to ask later, Reinhardt. Reinhardt. Just hearing that name made Roberto's insides churn. He desperately wanted to get back at him somehow. Magic body strengthening. He must have resorted to some dirty trick. There's no way that a commoner, even if they were part of the temple, could have awakened to magic body strengthening faster than him, who had received full support from the royal family, consumed all the best things for his body, and trained in the best environment. Robert vowed to one day expose Reinhardt's dirty true nature. A few days later, Robert headed to the temple's main auditorium during the weekend. They said they were looking for the owner of Alsebringer. He couldn't deny that he had a slight hope that it might be him. If he were to become the owner of Alsebringer, what should he do? He do, he do, as the rightful heir of Gardnia. It would be an honor for the sacred relic to choose him. But he worried if he should decline, as he had to prioritize his royal duties. And after that, he also had to find a political solution to the awkward relationship with the Oz religion. Well, he could think as much as he wanted, and it wasn't impossible. Roberto was entertaining such thoughts. With that determination, Roberto de Gardnia was facing an unbelievable sight. Yuyuan seeing Reinhardt, who had been chosen by Alsebringer, he couldn't shake the feeling that something had gone terribly wrong. Alsebringer has... Chosen Reinhardt. Alsbringer's choice. The surroundings were buzzing loudly, however. Watching the scene, Roberto felt something off in the expression of his unlucky senior, Reinhardt. He had been chosen by the sacred relic, and yet, somehow, he looked like a man who had encountered something terribly unpleasant. Terribly in front of the enormous honor of being chosen by the sacred relic, Reinhardt's expression was frozen. Roberto couldn't help but sense it. The intuition that this man was some other being, fundamentally different from himself. But the hero's sword, Alsebringer, an object that can summon the war god Oz. But the price is one's life. Regan Arturus summoned the war god to defeat the demon king and lost his life as a result. There were only two relics in the original work, Lament and Alsebringer. Ellen's sword, Lament, was a very sharp sword. Not much different from an arrow blade in terms of effect. Ellen couldn't draw out the true power of the relic. The true power of Alsebringer is to summon the war god. The war god. In that sense, Alsebringer is a relic. But because it is too powerful on its own, the balance doesn't fit. That's why Lemon also has a hidden true power. But Ellen just couldn't draw it out. I was quite knowledgeable about Alsebringer. Saturday, the grand hall of the main building, where all the royal class members were gathered. There weren't many people present. The royal family was now searching for a new master of Alsebringer. They might not choose the master from among the royal class members. If so, they would look for the master elsewhere. In the current situation, where the Demon King's forces are growing stronger, the Empire needs a new hero. It is possible that one of the students here could be that person. The Emperor said while standing on the stage and stage and looking at the gathered royal class members. If a master of Alsebringer is chosen from among you, you must keep this matter a complete secret. 
The Demon King will try to eliminate the next master of Al Sabringer before they can become a threat. They were looking for a new master of Al Sabringer, and if they found the master, their existence must be shrouded in utter secrecy. It was no wonder everyone's expressions were tense. They could almost feel the presence of the Demon King, as if the name itself were pressing against their skin. That's why the Empire would search for a new hero among promising groups like the Knights or the Royal Class, thus, only a little less than 200 people, including the Emperor and the high-ranking priests of the Earth's religion, were present in the hall. The process was complicated, but the outcome was right before my eyes. I was watching Al Sabringer, floating in the air, waiting for me to grasp it. Everyone was watching me, the chosen one of Al Sabringer. It should have been Ludwig's. Originally, Al Sabringer should have chosen Ludwig. Would Al Sabringer choose another master if I refused? If I rejected it, and Al Sabringer accepted my refusal and moved to another master, there was a high probability it would be Ludwig. But how was that any different from telling Ludwig to die in my place? Ludwig might not know the true power of Al Sabringer, but he would naturally learn about it in time. The inscription on the sword of Al Sabringer shone brightly, accomplished through sacrifice. By the keyword of Al Sabringer was sacrifice. In fact, I had expected this, the sword. Al Sabringer, this sword chooses only those who are willing to die for the world as its master. Everyone was watching me, in the midst of some envious, astonished, and seemingly approving gazes. Flash, I grasped the sword of the war god. The brilliantly shining sword of the war god seemed to acknowledge me as its master, pouring out a fierce radiance. Clap, 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 clap the emperor. The applause of Nelid de Guardius echoed faintly throughout the hall. The hall. Soon, Numerous claps from others followed. The situation was truly bitter. Al Sabringer, to be precise. I had been chosen by the very object that had killed my father, and the fact that I had become the master of Al Sabringer was to be shrouded in secrecy, however. I couldn't be sure if the secret would be kept properly. A strict gag order had been placed upon everyone who had been present at the scene. The Empire had to guard this secret closely lest I be targeted for assassination by the Demon King, and the royal class students who had witnessed the spectacle were also sternly demanded to keep the secret, keep the secret, without knowing that the one chosen by Al Sabringer was the Demon King himself. Anyway, although I concealed the fact that I was the master of Tiamata, a considerable number of people now knew I had become the master of Al Sabringer. It wasn't official, but I had become someone chosen by a sacred relic, as expected. I had no choice but to have a private audience with the Emperor, who had personally witnessed the ceremony to find the Master of Al Sabringer. Master of two sacred relics, the Emperor looked at me with a sullen expression. I wonder if I have a hero greater than Regan Arterius before me. Regan Arterius also had two sacred relics, but he had only wielded one in his battle against the Demon King. I couldn't find a response to the Emperor's calm words. In truth, Ellen also possessed two sacred relics, but we didn't mention it. The Emperor placed his hand on my shoulder. For him to touch my body directly was an immense honor. Reinhardt, yes, your majesty. He just stared into my eyes for a while, not saying anything. It seemed he wanted to say something, but his lips wouldn't part, finally. You've become too important for me to make a personal request. With that, he gave a bitter smile without answering what he had intended to say. I entrust you with the future of humanity. It wasn't unintentional that he didn't use the term, the empire, the future of humanity. Yes, the future that even transcended that of the future of the world. That was what I desired. I will do my best, no matter what. A nuclear weapon had been placed in my hands. A nuclear weapon that had to be used alongside my own life. The fact that it was a nuclear weapon remained unchanged. It, after encouraging me, the Emperor quietly returned to the Imperial Palace, as if nothing had happened. Despite the huge incident, as if nothing had happened, the people gathered in the main hall dispersed, and I returned to the Royal Class Dormitory. I'm not sure if this is something to congratulate you on. I think it's a headache. I already have one sacred relic, exactly. It seemed that Ellen didn't think my becoming the master of Al Sabringer was such a good thing, of course. It was great to have gained another sacred relic. 
but she seemed to worry that other people knowing about it might cause problems. After saying that, Ellen suddenly changed the subject. First, talk to me later and go see Harriet now. Harriet, why Harriet? She's crying. What? Why would she suddenly cry? Are you crying out of joy? Our Reinhardt has been chosen by the sacred artifact. What could be the reason for that? <gasps> but the reality was entirely different. You, you. As soon as I entered the room, Harriet hugged me tightly and burst into tears. Don't do it. Don't do anything. I write. You, 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 you. Ah, the sacred artifact had a different meaning for Harriet. She doesn't know that I possess Chermata. Having become the owner of the sacred artifact, she intuits that I must inevitably fight the Demon King. She fears that I might die. That's why she was crying. I'm scared. I'm so scared, Reinhardt. Who? 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 No. Why would I die from this? Still. 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 Harriet sobbed endlessly in my arms, as if the world was about to collapse. I won't die. If you die. You can't die, okay? Don't be reckless fighting the Demon King. You can't. Promise me. Promise. Alright. Why would I do such a thing, ho? Oh. I won't die, won't you, you? I... I'll become stronger too. I'll definitely... protect you. Yes, yes, having become the owner of the sacred artifact that would kill me if I drew out its true power, power, power. I assured Harriet that I wouldn't die. But if this were a public event, it would have caused a huge uproar, and the name Reinhardt would have spread to every corner of the continent. But due to the timing, things remained quiet even after Alsbringer, the sacred artifact, closed its new owner, even within the royal class dormitory. Talking about Alsbringer was strictly forbidden, teachers kept a tight watch on discussions, and the way my seniors and juniors looked at me changed, as if I were a being from a different dimension that commanded all, of course, even though it was strictly forbidden, there were still plenty of opportunities to share stories. Olivia came to visit me as well. Having become the owner of the sacred artifact, it was inevitable for people to believe that I was destined to fight the Demon King, just as Harriet did. Olivia felt the same way. Olivia gently hugged me, knowing why she did so. I couldn't push her away this time. Olivia stroked my head. Olivia was in a position where she had been saved by the Demon King, therefore, if I were to fight the Demon King, Olivia would be in a difficult situation. It seemed that she didn't harbor any resentment towards the Demon King at the moment. I'm on your side. No matter what happens, I'm on your side. It seemed she was prepared to become the enemy of the Demon King who saved her if I were to fight him. However, her words had a completely different meaning to me now. I know, Olivia Lance. Even if she knows that I am the Demon King, she will still be on my side. Everyone's gaze towards me had changed slightly. Although I had taken something that should have belonged to Ludwig, he didn't know that Alsebringer was originally meant to be his. Honestly, I don't feel much guilt about taking it. It, it. If I were to hand it over to someone who's always ready to sacrifice themselves for humanity, they might end up using it against me. It's right for both Ludwig and me that I become its owner. I'll work hard as well, so that I can be of at least some help to you. Alright, those were Ludwig's words. You really are amazing, Cliffman said. If you kill the Demon King, I can marry you. What nonsense are you talking about? Anyway, let's not die. Both of us, Lyanna looked at me and abruptly said that, hitting my shoulder as she walked by. Amazing, Reinhardt. To think that even Al Sabringer chose you, Charlotte congratulated me with a bright smile, seemingly thinking that me becoming stronger couldn't be a bad thing. And then, the owner of two sacred artifacts, on the terrace, Bertus looked at me and said those words. I thought he would find out someday. But as always, Bertus already knew. Already knew. Already knew. <laughs>